Aloha, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Activate and Elevate with Sheila and Jan. Um, my apologies today. My co-host, the beautiful Jan Rand, has uh, flying to um, Arizona for a patching parties that she is going to be part of. And so I get to interview my special guest, Mr. Ivory Sully, today for everybody. I'm hoping that we will have a little bit of time at the end of the call for you guys to ask questions if you'd like. And I'm going to put out a disclaimer here right this minute. There's going to be a lot of talk about football on this call because that's who I am and we are in football season. And I got some questions for you, Mr. Sully. But before that, I'm going to just let everybody know who Mr. Ivory Sully really is. He was a running back at the University of Delaware in 2009, or pardon me, 1979, he graduated. He went to Los Angeles undrafted and the Rams picked him up. And one day after being a running back, his coach called him in and said, sir, you will be a defensive back. And after that, in 2009, the University of Delaware actually did put him into the Hall of Fame. And then he had this illustrious career, six years for the Rams. And he was part of the team that uh, his freshman year, rookie year as a football player, they shut out Tampa Bay and they went to the 14th Super Bowl. And how many rookies get to go to a Super Bowl? Big question, right? And then I hear that because you had the hardest hits in the league, you earned the title of Mr. Hit. Is that a truth? Don't, <laughs> don't speak too loud, okay? That's the way we used to play football. Physical. <laughs> That's even physical. <laughs> the you? real way to play football, right? <laughs> so I know you played for the Rams for six years. And uh, I believe it was in those five, five of those years, you were the outstanding special teams player of the year. And um, then in, was it 80, 85, I think, Tampa Bay gave up their seventh round draft pick to get you on board because they knew they needed you. And then in 87, I know that you ended your career with the Detroit Lions and what a way to go out on the final play you played, you caused a fumble and the Lions won the game. So everybody, that is the history that I'm aware of of Ivory. And I just want to say thanks. Did I get it right for the most part? For the most part, you did really good. I was uh, actually interested in listening to you. That was great. <laughs> I'm going to around in my back pocket. So, so you can <laughs> That was great. <laughs> so, <laughs> I've always literally, I know this is crazy and weird, but I've always wanted to meet a, an NFL player. And, you know, a lot of people fangirl over or fanboy over celebrities and movie stars. And the only other time, honestly, that I have ever fangirled over anybody was, um, I think it was two years ago, possibly in May, I had the honor, or maybe it was even a year ago in May, I had the honor of interviewing David Schmidt. And um, so, Ivory, you are right up there for me. I am fangirling on it. And um, so I, I know that you met Marcy in a crazy place. And that's how you were introduced to LifeWave. Can you share that with everybody, please? Well, I'm going to try to stay away uh, from uh, mentioning any uh, brand names. But I was uh, at a uh, conference of um, uh, that, that met uh, uh, in Palm Springs. And we uh, met and it was a, uh, let's see, holistic healing uh, solution. Let's just put it to you that way, okay, that you can lay down on and you can get great circulation okay so it was all about blood circulation and everything and i'm very much on the holistic piece i really uh you know i'm not really too much on the 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 the, the pharma piece and taking taking pills and stuff like that i try to stay away from it but that's where we met i was sitting at a seat and all of a sudden marcy you know in her delicate way just came and just you know, she just started talking to me and light lit up the, the whole room. And 
I said, you, you can definitely sit beside me. That, that's, <laughs> and that's how, that's really the, how it happened. She was looking for a seat and I said, come on over here and sit down. I, you know, I got a seat right here for you. And what a blessing that's been over the years. It really has. She's an amazing woman. And, um, you know, uh, when you started, um, what, was it the Pro Ballers call last year we were listening to? Yes. And yeah. um, I really enjoyed um, watching. That was where I got introduced to you on getting to hear you beyond football. And um, it was wonderful. I loved how you would gain, gather your your friends that yep. have been turned on and you guys would talk. And now I want to talk about kind of what you guys were talking about. Tell us, can you please tell us about your experiences? I mean, you were the hardest hitter in your tenure there um, as a defensive back. What physically did that do to you? Well, uh, I will explain to you that first of all, I was um, I was an athlete growing up when I was in when I was young and before high school. I was not allowed to play football. My parents wouldn't let me play football, okay. and I watched football. I, I was a Baltimore Colt fan, Johnny Unitas, and all. <laughs> stuff. I was like, I was hardcore into that. And uh, I, I knew that, you know, I was really frustrated because I knew that I would never have an opportunity to play this game. So the, 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 as things progressed, I was a state champ in a lot of sports, track, you know, tennis, you know, anything you threw at me. And I excelled at, but I wanted to play football. And one day it was my, it was before my junior year, my 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 mother and my father were at the house and my dad uh, had to go into the hospital. And so I kind of caught my mom at a low ebb and uh, I uh, actually got her got my best friend's mother to call the house and talk to my mom to see if I could play football. <laughs> and it worked. And so that's why you have best friends, you know, and the best friend's mom comes in and helps out. Oh my God, I was on cloud nine. Let me tell you something. Every single day after that, I cherished because, um, because uh, of not being able to play. It really elevated my, my whole sensibility to wanting to do the absolute best that I could. When they brought me here to the Rams, now I, I, I was the running back at the University of Delaware and I scored touchdowns. I got into the Hall of Fame doing that there. But I came to the Rams and they switched me the next, the day that I got here, the, the second day, they switched me to defensive back. I've never played defensive back in my life, but I know for a fact that it was to be physical and actually you had a lot of tackling responsibilities, a lot of taking on big guys, 300 pound guys. And, you know, I just had, I just had a natural gift for that in doing all of that at the level that we did it at during those times and the game was even more physical than you would think because a lot of stuff happened off camera that you couldn't quite see or oh. couldn't understand but let me tell you something that's where the game was and it was built it was played on a whole different level for, of physicality oh. referees weren't quite as tight on the calls for you know doing that because now we have to protect the head and we have to do all the things that we need to and we should have actually done at that time, but it wasn't done that way at, the, at that time. And so let me just say that I have revisited those a lot of those hits in waking up at night with a headache, uh, with, uh, with, with, you know, just the general, you know, wow, I am jacked up. I, I really did affect my body and my well-being uh, physically. And uh, I'm still like an athlete and I still enjoy getting out there and hitting the tennis ball and, you know, and, and, and doing things. But, you know, it's it, it became very difficult. Then uh, that's why I wanted to, I took on these holistic solutions to basically heal and ease the pain. You know, because when you wake up and your neck is a little bit disjointed on the pillowcase and you wake up with a headache that you don't know where it, you know, you didn't think that there were headaches like that. It, it just really becomes a burden. And I got to tell you, 
meeting Marcy and being introduced to this science and this technology has changed the game. I have not, I mean, I'm telling you, this is the biggest, this is the biggest piece of it. I have not had a headache since the day I started the patches. That is huge. What, can you tell us how long you've been using them, please? What, I mean, I'm telling you, it, it, it occurred in the first, the, the period that I tried them out the week, a week, right. I've been patches. And it, and it happened on the, on the fourth day, the fourth day, and it was on. And I, I'm never, I was never taking them off. I'm telling you, it was, it was great. Have you been on them two years, three? I'm, I'm coming, Creston, on four years almost here in November using them. How long? Uh, I, I've been on them going on four years. It's almost four years right now. Okay. And, and I am, I am absolutely, you know, I'm absolutely a different dude. At, as I was aging, and it's all how we age, right? It, it, that's really the, the the key to the whole thing. And if you can live, if I can live a productive life and continue to get get out and do things, if I'm not useful though, and if my brain doesn't work, and I, you know, you know, we all lose our memories as we get older, okay? But it was coming a little bit more frequent than I was comfortable with, mm -hmm. and I. A smart guy. I used to be a pretty intelligent guy. My parents sent me to a, I, I got an opportunity to go to a great university. When that starts slipping, then it's like, you're in no, I'm in no man's land. I mean, it, it, that along with the physical ailments along, along with the, just the slow memory, the recall, being in conversations and you couldn't remember the guy that's sitting right next to you. And it's so embarrassing, you know, all those things. But I got to tell you, it changed it swapped out my my activity and, and what I was able to do. I was back to being ivory. That's the most important thing for me. And so I heard the word ding knocked around. Can you tell everybody what a ding is in football? <laughs> Literally, you feel it. You like get a ring, a ring, a ding, a ding in your head after you hit somebody with your head. And mm -hmm. um my head was involved in a few too many uh, collisions. Let's just say that, okay? Um, you know, I, I, I would always, we, it was taught to us to start in the middle of a guy with your, with your head going to the spot and then slide off to the shoulder that you're going to hit with. And that was the mistake that they made. I mean, it all starts with the shoulder right now. And I teach, and I teach actually now, coach, the proper tackling technique. But the technique that we were taught was center line right where you're going to hit it, and then at the last second go to the either side. Well, I didn't get to go to either side. To so, sometimes just didn't go to the either side. Just went straight here with my with my skull, and that was it. And in the days you were playing, the helmets were remedial at best, right? They were nothing like they're using today with the cushion and the to protect your brain. Is that correct? The first. The first, uh, uh, when I got into the pros, the first helmet that I had was an old Rydell. And that was a rubber suspended circumstance that goes, on, that fits your head. And it kind of just, uh, it kind of just gives you a buffer, a buffer to go, a, to go and it gives a little bit. And that thing didn't, that thing wasn't worth the money that you, I mean, it was just terrible. I might as well. The leather helmets. I'm not lying. It was terrible. It was terrible. Wow. And so I, I, while I was in the league, I was fortunate enough to go, and they had a company called Bike, and this bike helmet was the, the next level because then you could, you know, there was uh, in, you could inflate it, you mm. could uh, put water in it, and and have it fit completely to your head, and it was actually, you know, it was it was formed to your head, and it gave. It gave enough so that it was actually actually useful, and so and there weren't any rings because with that with the Rydell helmet, it would literally when you hit somebody with it, you would get a ring, bing, you would get that, and that's because of it was the plastic, it was the 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 material on the outside, the the plastic or whatever it was, that was you know, knocking against another one of those, and so uh, but with with the bike helmets. That that was the start of the technology for 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 helmets, and I'm really 
glad that they're at the different stage right now where they really are taking care of getting the head out of the game. Just get the head out of the game. That, yeah. That's what you have to do. I think about the players that we've lost probably in the last 15, 20 years to different head injury stuff. I mean, very um, celebrated players, right? Some of these guys. And Junior Sam, say, yeah. Junior right? say, that's what I've been thinking about. You know, I literally, since you've been talking, just thinking about these guys and, and, um, and too bad they didn't have patches. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, it would have been it would have been effective for them to have patches. And the thing about it is, is, you know, Junior was uh, was affected by a CTE. And so uh, he had a situation going on that none of us really find out about until we're dead. And they go in and they do a synopsis on it, a, a, a study on on our brain. And uh, CTE studies have really helped in uh, uh, helping the uh, uh, helping understand what the, what the circumstances really were. And I got to tell you that the stem cell technology is this, you know, it's, it, it really is in the forefront of, of all of this stuff that where you can regenerate uh, with, with, with stem cells and, and, and uh, you know, create a different outcome because junior had no control over what he was doing. I mean, he didn't know he really didn't. And you can tell when a guy is affected you know, with my old, with some of my older colleagues uh, and, and former players, you can tell that uh, something's up, something's wrong. Yeah. When are you and I going to hold a big old patching party for these guys? Look, I, I, I have a, have a desire to invite, you know, my brothers that, and, and especially my brothers that really need it to a yeah. pack party so that we can actually, you know, turn them on. That's the reason, one of the reasons why I'm on here. And one of the reasons why I do what I do is because I want to share this with my, with my brothers. And, uh, you know, it, it just makes sense. It, what's working for me. I have to spread the news. I'm not going to keep it to myself. That would be ridiculous. Right. You know, when you say that, I literally, am. I'm, I'm one of those, um, I can vacillate in and out of emotions really quickly. And it, it makes me catch my breath because you are in service. And, and I appreciate that because, because as a, an avid fan, I, I mean, holy crap, let's, I have a game for you. Okay. We're going to play a little game. I've been thinking about this since last week, actually, when Jan said, he's coming. And <laughs> the game is called patch, no patch. Okay. I'm going to throw a couple of scenarios out at you and I just want your feedback. So Monday night football, Mr. Aaron Rodgers. Okay. I decided this year that I was going to follow Aaron. I was going to root for Aaron. I was going to let's, let's see what he can do on another team. Right. Four snaps into it blows his Achilles tendon uh, patch no patch. Uh, do you do you mean should he have been patching or okay? Would you would would you patch okay. him or would you you know yeah? Oh, what? Well, the status that he's in at this point, he has to get it. it, it ha he has to reconnect his Achilles tendon to his calf, and that was the reason why it happened because he had he had affected his uh, calf, which obviously the calf goes into the Achilles and that's what it is. I would absolutely patch, absolutely patch. And I, you know, it would be a great idea to try to reach out to him. As a matter of fact, I have thought about reaching out so that he could put the patch on, you know, and, and, and have it affect his uh, recovery because it would enhance the recovery. There's no doubt about it. I, you know, I'm going to share real quick with you, Ivory. Uh, two, well, it'll be three weeks on this coming up Monday. I fell down. I broke my left big toe, some of the tarsals behind it, and I uh, landed on my knee that I had four knee surgeries on, have nothing but bone on bone. And then I hurt my shoulder again after having a 12-year hiatus from a full shoulder reconstruction. Uh, I have been walking without a cast, crutches, anything. And all I can think of for him is 
buddy, you need to get on the patches. And so, um, okay, so Aaron is a patch. All right. Got to say one thing first. Okay. He needs to talk to his boy because everybody's talking about this guy coming back and taking his place. Tom Brady. Tom Brady patches, okay? Let's get this right. Let's get this straight. There's a reason why he played into his 40. There's a reason. Serena Are Williams. You serious? Tom Brady's patching? Didn't know that. I didn't know that. Oh my God. <laughs> you know it. Oh my goodness. Wow. Uh, Serena Williams patches. That's why she could uh, she could play into her into her late, you know, later athletic years so right. effectively. I mean. You know, there's pictures of the patches on her on her shoulder for crying out loud. Yes, I mean, a well-known fact. Yes. So anyway, now, yes. Next question. I'm sorry. Next question. Okay. Marcus Williams, Ravens, took his shoulder out. Patch or no patch? Anybody that has, an, and here's the thing, they're young. They, their stem cell system is working effectively and it's max, at its maximal uh, uh, ability at my age this, <laughs> it goes to nothing okay and unless we have the patch to bring it up the patch is needed to incite the stem cell and the and the and the re recovery of, of of things that 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 the that stem cells do and absolutely there's just no reason not to okay that's what i'm thinking there's no reason not to put the patch on and it will enhance the recovery time there's no question about it no question absolutely you know when when the, it was the draft time i was hoping that we were going to have the pro ballers club because i wanted to ask you a question if you were able to get up there on stage and speak to all of these freshmen coming into the nfl all these rookies what would have you have told them what would you say to them if you could could address them right this minute the, the thing that I would have addressed is congratulations, welcome to the NFL, get ready for a great experience. For some of you, it might be a couple of years. For some of you, it might be 20 years. Mm. We don't, but the, but the deal is, is the thing that separates you from playing one or two years more than likely or playing for a lifetime almost 20 years is the fact that you stay healthy. Mm. And the fact is, is that you have to have that vehicle, which will help maintain and accelerate you to perform. You cannot make the team on the sideline. You just get in the NFL, especially. They, sorry, they don't just don't they just don't pay out millions of dollars to guys that are that are hurt and they try to get you off their payroll for crying out loud. <laughs> and so, the thing that I am telling them, the thing that I would tell them is, please pursue the whole any a holistic solution for recovery recovery is the most important thing and that's where the that the patches are most important for, for 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 people for athletes i believe is the recovery aspect so that they can then go out and play effectively the next week that's the deal where you get hurt is when you get tired and when you get tired you you have a lax a lax body and you cannot afford to have a lax body anytime on in the nfl you have to be on point. And so that is the reason why a guy like a Tom Brady would would have, would, would wear them religiously. Mm -hmm. it, dude, I mean, it, it's a simple, it's a simple theory, but it's about, you know, they, they, they should definitely take advantage of it. I would love to have the opportunity to uh, introduce the patches to all the 32 teams, uh, rookies for crying out loud, you know, mm -hmm. and of course the veterans, but, rookies especially to create to create this new uh, uh, uh culture the patching culture right right that mindset that my body is the temple right and i can use it to its fullest degree and and um so um would you recommend them the x49 to go with the x39 is that what you would tell them because that's the recovery right the the patch that helps you um with vitality recovery all that mind-blowing stuff <laughs> the performance patch is something the performance package is a thing that I, I i i gotta be honest with you when i got my first performance package i said where the heck were you years ago what is 
six years old right now. What do I need it now? Okay, I do need it. Of course I do. But golly, would I have loved to have had, uh, you know, that performance patch, you know, the patches, you know, during the time that I was I was performing. And especially as we get into, because there is a there is a sweet spot. One through four years is where you are at optimal efficiency and you will recover, okay? It's okay. after the fourth year, though, man. I'm telling you, after the fourth year, it's things start to slow down. And that, that recovery time that you have, seven days, well, I'm not quite recovered on the seventh day. Now I'm kind of rolling into the eighth day. Oh, but guess what? On that seventh day, I'm playing a game. So the deal is, is I'm playing at not optimal uh, health. That's what the story is. And that is when the injuries are more possible, right? When you're, because like I was listening to the, you know, one of the things that was shifting here for, for a, a football chat for a minute, I can barely tolerate some of these talking heads, you know, give me Howard Cosell. I mean, give me, give me John, man. I want to listen to them. I want to hear the talk about the game. I don't want these talking heads to just go. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. But the other day, one of them, um, I cannot remember which player it was. It was actually last night. And um, one of the, the guys said, might've been Al Michael said, Ooh, it was in the fourth quarter. They're getting tired. And that's when you get hurt. And that's right. 100. And, I was like, mm, I got to talk to um, Ivory about that and and ask, do you think, based on, you know, your awareness of playing all those years, do you think the fourth quarter is where they mostly get hurt? No question. There, there, there's no question about that. There's no there's no doubt about that. Obviously, injuries happen at every time. But unless you played up until the fourth quarter in an NFL game, Say you're in Tampa Bay, it's 90 degrees, 90% 90 humidity. It is just ghastly. I mean, I'm telling you, it is, a, it is an experience that is something that I would never want anybody to go through. But you still have to make plays, and you've got to make the plays to save the games, and you've got to make the plays to help us get over the hump. And you cannot take, the da take a down off. You just can't. Absolutely in the fourth quarter, is the time when you're thinking all of that. And that right there, I will tell you, in a professional athlete's mind, is where they become a, a, a superior being because they have to tackle all the demons and they're all coming in at the same time. And what I'm not feeling, how tired I am, how do I stay away from this guy, this guy, oh, this guy nicked me over here. You've got to take that whole package and throw it out the, the window and just go play football. I okay. can tell you, I, can, I got to tell you one thing. The way that I hurt myself, and I, I injured myself, I had, I, had, I had some injuries, but nothing serious. But the one that really, you know, bothered, took me, took me down was my left shoulder. I subluxed it. I went, I was in Philadelphia. I tripped over a seam in the AstroTurf, and I fell on this shoulder. I, it, I didn't, I'm, I didn't have to retire because, you know, of a big hit or anything. I tripped over the AstroTurf in Philadelphia's Veteran Stadium, and I subluxed my left shoulder, and my left shoulder was never the same. And that was in my ninth year. And I was, you talk about, you talk about frustrating. I mean, forgive me. I'm Mr. Hit. Really? Oh, yeah. I'm really Mr. Hit. I got your Mr. Hit here for crying out loud. You're standing on the sideline watching the game for crying out loud. It's crazy. So, yes, as you get older, as the go games go on, any the late events in the in football are where injuries do do happen. Yes. And um, God, I had another question there for a second. So, would you outlaw astroturf? A hundred thirty percent. I got to tell you, man. And there are some beautiful fields. There are some beautiful fields of grass. It, 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 Arizona has a great grass field. They take. They take the whole thing out, they grow the grass, and they bring it back in for the game. It is like a carpet, and there is no, and it and it gives. AstroTurf does not give. I don't care how many little rubber balls you put in the freaking thing; it's not going to give. And we have to have give so that you know we're not we're not playing you know like bumping our head against the wall for crying out loud, right? I mean that's the 
sometimes when you watch the hits, I mean, this weekend, there was a couple ice, it was raining somewhere. They were hitting that turf and then they were sliding across it. And my husband and I had that conversation about, wow, turf is so terrible. I mean, uh, it, it is t turf toe from AstroTurf or can you get it on um, green? Grass? Kansas going to get it. No, yeah. Turf toe is an AstroTurf driven injury. 100%. Yes. Yeah, 100%. You know, you know, yeah, we would come up, you'd have a toe, a toe ailment, but this AstroTurf, increases that injury tenfold i mean it just really you know if you get get a little tweak on your toe i mean that's one thing but then that after turf takes it to a whole different level i played on great grass down in tampa bay they put that we had the best field i never had a problem on that field in two years was uh la um turf or or sod it was anaheim stadium so it was it was turf and you know it was a little bit, you know, disjointed until baseball season went. Okay, right. So we all had to w worry about the, the 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 dirt because the dirt was part of one side of the of the stadium of the of the field, you know. But uh, yes, yeah. So uh, there's no question. Turf is the choice, and we really need to get to it. Mm. Wow. You know, um, look at Aaron, look at Aaron, Aaron, Aaron Rodgers. I mean, that turf did not help him. I mean, yeah. that was not an exceptional play where it's like it's that he had an injury, his calf, and then it was, you know, he had to make an athletic move and it was still in the healing process, an athletic move that transferred down to his Achilles tendon. I mean, it's a no brainer. He's going to get hurt. He wasn't smashed. He no, was, that was, was so crazy. Watching, was, uh, I mean, and you know what? Well, for me, the worst part was he was my fantasy quarterback. <laughs> well, God, that's good. You know, God bless you. I felt bad for him. I'm not, I've never been a fan of, of his, but I really feel, I actually put it, had a couple of tears in my eyes for his loss. I really do. Cause I know put in, he really, you, did. you know, I mean, for me, um, yeah, I was always in our fantasy league. We have a guy who's from Wisconsin. We call him cheese whiz. Okay. And um, he was always all about Aaron and everything. And, you know, like I said, I'm a 40 year Raider. So it was like oh, to Aaron, but um, once he moved and, and I'm teamless, I decided I'm going to support him. Cause you know, Brady left and I, I, that, that was a real easy split for me. Raiders went over to Vegas Brady went to Tampa. I became a Tampa Bay fan and I won my league that year with him. Uh, yeah. But it just makes me sad for the, for Aaron, because for anybody, I don't care if it's, you know, Zach Wilson could have had it. anybody on your fourth touch, you know, fourth um, run of a series of your opening game for the season and you are done. And um can I can I go into a controversy? Are are you okay with asking me asking you a semi controversial question of the olden days? And I don't know that they would do it today as coaches and trainers and stuff. But can I ask you one of the questions, or should I walk away? You can always ask whether I'm going to answer is another thing. <laughs> okay, and and that's and that's fair. I I re, I respect that. Um, when when we were young okay i'm almost 60 so yeah when i was young and i was watching and you guys were taking those and giving those monster hits and somebody would get cracked up and taken you know like carried off by two of you guys players or walking this other guy off did they when today we have concussion protocols um, and we got the little tent where people go in and they can look at them right away and everything. What was it for you guys? I mean, you're laying on that ground and all of a sudden you've got this ding ringing in your head and they pick you up and they take you to the sidelines. What then happened? Did they sometimes juice you guys to um, block pain or did they just, you know, smelling salt to you and say, okay, wake up, get out there and hit Ivory. <laughs> being politically correct okay <laughs> excuse me let's just say that 
let me let me let me let me say this the right way. Okay. If this way, you know, um, uh, they had a resolution, they had resolutions for issues that you used to have for your head that are not practiced today. Okay. Like, okay, let's just say like this, you know, I've had several of my of my teammates even, you know, that have been knocked out and they, you know, have to take them off the field and they give them smelling salts. Yeah, absolutely. And they, they would ask us the, 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 you know, four questions, you know, what time is it? How many brothers and sisters do you have? And they, and if we answered the questions, well, we were going to go back out and play regardless of the severity of the blow that was given to you. Okay. Now I will tell you, um, um, the back room, let's just say there was a back room. Let's just say that. And, you know, there were some, uh, uh, there were some, uh, ways that uh, we found a way to get back out there. Let's just say that, okay? Okay, okay. Thank okay. you. It, it, it's a, it's a, it was a different world. It really was. I'm so glad we're doing it the, you know, this, the right way. The player comes first. You remember the Buffalo game last year when the guy got, um, where he was uh, right the, on, on the Monday night game? Yes, Dude, sir. I was, I was, this is the reason why we do what we do now, okay? And it right. really, you know, th that violent, it, it was just that it was, it, it happened. And, you know, you know, the guy was on the on his, on his deathbed, basically, you know? And wow, it was just a wow moment. It was like an eye-opening moment um, to have the correct protocol. In, and they did, they had the correct protocol. They did the right things when they needed to do it. You know, I think <clears throat> that if I was um, the commissioner of NFL, I would make a mandate because everybody in power today, you know, they all like making mandates, right? I would mandate you have to wear the patches. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I mean, why not? I mean, come on, you know, let's get these players. They, they, like you said, they are, they are in peak. These people are peak specimens of health for the most part, right? Of, um, um, strength and athleticism. Why not? You know, you guys all have to wear uh, um, helmets and pads and all this stuff, why not say, you got to patch to yourself. You got to slap this energy performer pats on you or, you know, the performance enhancing. I mean, that's what I would, um, that's what I would lobby for if I was, uh, if I had the voice to do that, but you know. Well, I'll tell you, if there was a way to have that done, I'd have done it already. I do happen to know several people at the NFL. It is something called capitalism, okay? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Happen to have, you know, that that, that would show undue uh, uh, favoritism to a certain uh, re resolution, and also it would have to there would have to be a lot of uh, 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 re research turned over to them, and and uh, as to how it does work and everything like that. It would be a process that would take ten years. I'd probably be in my grave for crying out loud. But <laughs> no, you way, can be longer. Come on, Mr. Sully. It, it is. Sure is age reversal path program. You're going to live for another 20 or 30 years, brother. <laughs> I'm, with you. I'm with you, sis. Absolutely. By the way, you said aloha. You say you wahini. Are you wahini? I, I live on Maui. Oh, wow. Okay. You wahini. Okay. If you live wahini. Okay, good. <laughs> that's, that's true. That's true. That's uh, and I'll tell you what. Um, yesterday, my um my upline, Kathleen who um, is a good friend of Marcy. And that was how I met Marcy. Uh, she and I went yesterday with our chiropractor over to the West side and we literally patched 71 people That's in cool. four hours. And um, the, the important thing to know about this is that um, we went over to the the Hyatt Regency and they are currently, they have 700 rooms in their hotel. They have 600 people in the rooms currently and 476 are employees that were displaced and are homeless. And right. so those 71 people that we saw were all employees of um, the Hyatt. However, they uh, just like, you know, it, 
if you're here and you were here during this last month, you are experiencing depression, anxiety, and PTSD and mm. no sleep. And yeah. uh, because you're always wondering, oh my God, what else is coming? You know, what's happening next? And these people, um, gosh, it's hard to even say it. We met a lady who her, she was in her um, late sixties and her and her husband survived, but her adult children, two adult children and four grandchildren all died in the fire. All right. And so being able to hold these patches and look at her and, and touch her on the shoulder and just say, you know, I can help you, um, to alleviate a little bit of this pain because you don't forget, you're never going to forget. Uh, but in the, in the ensuing hour that she was in our, um, little program that we were running, we saw her go from tears to a smile. Okay. That is the kind of service that I want to be in. I want to help these people. And you know, what is even crazier? Every single one of those 71 per people said when, like, I would literally hold the patch up to him. And I would say, um, so this is called the X39. And what it's going to do is help. So, you know, I tell them about light, blah, 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 really quick, because these people cannot process. And we would tell them, you know, this is going to help with depression, anxiety, PTSD. And they would go, and they were, most of them came in like this. And right. when you say that, they kind of come like this. But then when I'd say, and mostly it's going to help you sleep kaboom and everybody wanted to be patched you know no i tell you that is the godsend i found that that uh, uh for that the patches gave me was you know i told you my neck and my head and the headaches and I, when the headaches and the neck went away i slept like a baby like i hadn't slept in years literally years i mean i'm talking about 10 years it was it's crazy. And to have the opportunity to get through a night's sleep and wake up and I'm jumping over the bed. I mean, it's like I'm feeling it. And obviously, you know, the best way for the body to heal is its own is having it heal itself through sleep. And the, the fact that this patch allowed me the opportunity to do that. So I am feeling that story that you're giving. And thank God for you to be there helping people. That's what it's about. Well, and you know what, the biggest, thank God. And, um, I mean, first of all, David Schmidt, uh, you know, I was walking with a cane when I got patched mm -hmm. and six weeks later, no more cane, but I was looking at 55 years old thinking I'm going to be on a cane for the rest of my life. What the hell? <laughs> and so, uh, when I met David Schmidt at my first convention in 2020, I gave him a hug and I said, thank you for the miracle. He said, I didn't give you a miracle, honey. God did. And, um, right? Praise God. And um, so what I need to tell you all is that Mr. David Schmidt donated all of these patches. There he has go. donated, um, I, I don't know how many, we're up to a hundred sleeves maybe that he has donated because this was our third week of going over to the island oh. and we're doing it for a total, I think of five weeks with our chiropractor. And so not only do we work, you know, building a business in a company that's wow, but what about the man, you know, um, just being willing to, to donate that to, uh, to us, to help these people. Wow. What yeah. a man. That is fantastic. Hey, well, listen, I'm, uh, I, I used to go to Hawaii, uh, and Maui especially, and I actually stayed at the hill at the, at the, um, no, uh, at the, uh, Hyatt there on Maui and uh, uh, after this, after, after a sea, after the season was over and I made that my trip and I did that for eight years and to watch it, that, that situation happen uh, on, you know, everything being destroyed. It's like, you got, it's just, it just, I was crying. I was telling you, I, I was crying through the whole thing. I mean, for, for, for weeks, you know, just, I, I just got such a, and, and so thank you very much first of all, for your service, yeah. for, thank you very much for, for you helping and uh, God bless you. That's fantastic. You know, it's the least we can do. The least yeah. we, can, we, we didn't know the first week we, we 
uh, Kathleen and I both knew we needed to get out and help people. But, you know, it, there's no way you can do that. I mean, what do you, they won't, they, they wouldn't even let Oprah walk into a shelter. They're not letting me and Kathleen walk into a shelter. A patch for you, a patch for you, you know, ain't happening. And so uh, we, um, our chiropractor um, obviously is a patching a chiropractor and and he he told me Sheila I need you and I need Kathleen we need to go take care of these people and um he's been he did it the first week they patched um I I that was the week I had blown up my shoulder and toe and stuff and I was going nowhere uh, so they patched by themselves and then last week I went and then this week Kathleen went with us and it it, it was so um is rewarding this is the service that we that you know we take this mantle of service on and i know that you are in service to people in other ways as well and right. what do you what other ways do you serve people ivory please share because <laughs> i know you do I, okay I know. first of all i'm going to do one thing here first is uh, it's uh after it's 12 15 and i okay. have to take Catch up. 12 hours on, 12 hours off. Let's get that straight, okay? How about that, right? So you're a night patcher. I'm a night patcher. Yes, I am. I am. That's how I sleep. That's the way it goes. And so I'm happy for it, you know, yeah. And my knees feel good. I wake up and I'm, you know, when I wake up, I wake up, you know, with a with little, little hop in a step, you know what I mean? So, okay. So are you talking about, all right, you say, so I'm going to have to guess about this. Are you talking about my coaching? Are you talking about what you have to tell me because I go well, on a I know that you have another um that you have a company that um God, I can't think of the name now. I've just been sitting here reading about you for four days. That's okay. Help, <laughs> help me out because uh, I got a lot on my plate. <laughs> you do, you do. It was um it's a program and you're helping other people. And um I don't know that it's a one-on-one -on -one coaching, maybe personal coaching. That talks here. Let me find it. All the executive services. Yes, that's it. <laughs> helping helping people transition and 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 move to the next level of their life. Yeah, you know you. Uh, uh, well, Sully Executive Service was born out of uh, you know uh, born out of the fact that I wanted to to help people. I uh, after football went into the uh, apparel business, if you can believe that. I found a transition piece as to where I'm going after I had done exactly what I wanted to do for my whole life. One day I woke up when I was age 32 and it was over. And I'm like, what the heck do you do when you've done exactly what you wanted to do your whole life? Because we were very, you know, very driven. Uh, my dad was a doctor. You know, he had to be driven to be a doctor and serve for people. You know, my mom was the same type of way he was. She was the support. And it was a typical doctor wife relationship where, where, where mommy did everything, you know, because daddy was out doing what he had to do. And, and, and he had a country practice. And so um, uh, the transition from from doing exactly it, it actually got me got me down. It was it put my spirit in, in, a, in a bad place. I wasn't I wasn't good uh, with with clear with what I should do next um and doing and doing things next that's why when Marcy sat down next to me at this convention and uh she had she's the one that introduced me to the patches um I always look for things to help people to transition because we're all we're all transitioning I don't care who you are you're transitioning and if you think that you've got a situation you're still transitioning because I went from a young NFL career to an old NFL career. And then there was a nothing after that. Mm. And what do you do when you can't do it anymore? Well, shoot, I, I look to the things that I'm passionate about. And the thing that I'm passionate about is I want to help people. That gives me my spirit. That, that wakes me up every morning. How can I help this? So that's why I went to coaching. You coach, you help people, you help these young boys grow and you into young men and you give them what what it what it takes to, to, to have them grow into it. The the transition piece for a lot of people is not accommodated 
because we don't think about it in that regard. We just think that we're going to do what we're going to do forever. Well, we don't. And when it ends, it ends. It's over. Find something. Find your passion. Do what you what you find a passion about. This is what I'm going to want to encourage everybody to do. This if it's the pat if it's the patches, which is a brilliant way to transition into something that will last you a lifetime. I mean, you transition within that realm even still. You for crying out loud, you went down to the hurricane. I mean, the fire uh, 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 on the west side and 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 help people. Are you kidding me? That's transitioning, okay? That's helping people. You're going to do something else past that e even. I know that because that's the way, that's who we are, you know? Mm -hmm. And deliver at a high level, you have to have a certain mentality. And that's the mentality that you need. And that's the mentality that I've, I've, I've brought about, you know, in, in, in doing the patches. It's brilliant. I mean, I'm telling you, this NFL conversation that I'm talking to you about I mean, it's not a foregone conclusion. I'm thinking of a way to get them to really listen to me and actually expedite it. I actually am doing that. Right. So it's really not, I didn't want to talk too much about it, but you, you're you on the right track, trust me. So you know, I, I have a list here of um, this last weekend and Monday night and Thursday players that you could contact <laughs> that all got hurt. <laughs> Um, and, and how about that? Uh, here's a no patch patch question for you. Uh, the ref that took the football in the back of the head this last weekend, how about him patch or no patch? Uh, to, I, I, I'm, I'm, uh, what, what, what player are you referring to? It was a ref, uh, 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 oh, it was a ref. The pass, the pass, uh, was thrown. Oh, they it, get, it, they get all the time they get beamed all the time patch or no patch of course it's a patch let me tell you if you've been hitting the back of the head with a football you know what that feels like let me tell you something. there's you no know, when i was a kid it don't yeah. feel very good so there's another uh there's another group for you ivory yeah. referee rep. i actually happen to know three of the head linesmen in the nfl and okay. uh you know, yes. So I have a connection to do that. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. So we have eight minutes left. I can, it's mind blowing that it's gone so fast, but I'm going to, if you're okay with it, I'm going to open up the floor to people to ask you questions. Cause I, I kind of been hogging you, but I told you I was going to fangirl. So uh, are you okay with that? If I open the floor to questions? 100%. If they, if they are so, uh, if they're so inclined to want to hear me talk even more, for crying out loud. Is it somebody putting the putting the putting the gun to my head and shooting me by now or what? What's the what's the story? I would absolutely love to answer any questions anybody has. Bring them on, folks. You have his attention. He is here to serve you. Uh, Susie and Steve in NorCal. We, I know Steve's got something in his brain. Ask it away. You can unmute. Anyway, uh Ivory, hello uh, from NorCal. And uh, uh, if I might ask you a personal question, just how old are you? Because you look like you're in great shape. Susie and I here are 75 and doing patches for a couple, three months here. But um, yeah, you've I been in. I got to tell you, I got to tell you, patches definitely work on how you're presenting. I'm 66 years old. 66 years old. I can still jump over buildings at a single bound. And I mean it. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Yeah, I wish I would have uh, been able. I wish I would knew these back when I was 34, but they weren't around because I lost him when he was 56. And uh, yeah, it would have done him a world of good. Right. And it should have, but we got it now, and our family's involved too. So thank you for sharing your day today. Oh, thank you, sir. I mean, let me tell you something. It's a blessing, I think, that the, that we've got the opportunity to have this, you know, to apply to our lives, and it's 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 great and. Thank you so much for asking your question to me, sir. Thank you, Steve. And next up, come on. Somebody's got one. I mean, I can hog the floor and talk to Ivory this whole six more minutes. Sadly, <laughs> Ivory, we have a uh, coming right behind us. We have a patching podcast. So we we have to stay true to our time, unfortunately. But, um, you know, 
Uh, anybody else? Come on. Okay, well, I'll just keep asking questions. I want to know, I want to know if anybody out there had an athletic experience and is benefiting from the patches themselves. That's what I want to know from somebody. Who's having an athletic experience and benefiting. And okay. benefiting from the patches. Anybody? <laughs> oh, 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 Annette, go ahead. Unmute, please. I don't know if it's considered athletic. I ride horses. Are you kidding? Not considering that athletic? Are you <laughs> nuts? <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> Some people don't consider it athletic. It is no doubt about it. It is it is uh, absolutely athletic. No question. <laughs> have you, um, have about you a year ago, I suffered uh, to be a plateau injury and a broken hip and pelvis. It's been a hard year recovery. I've been on the patches for about three and a half, almost four months. And Good. I'm riding horses and it's comfortable. You're back? You're back riding horses? Yep. Fantastic. That is, that is, that's amazing. You know, well, of course it, it's, it's your carriage. It's your middle carriage. It's your hips. It's your, it's your butt. It's your quads. It's all of that. I mean, that right there is the center of movement for crying out loud. And it's, it's, you know, for people that don't think that horse riding is, is an athletic endeavor. They're crazy. It's tiring. <laughs> Absolutely. There was also somebody that said something about climbing roofs and stuff like that. I, 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 I think I saw something, something down there, but uh, don't be, don't, don't uh, sleep on horse riders. I have all the respect in the world for you. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. Thank you, Annette. <clears throat> and one last question for you or response, Terry, go ahead and unmute. Miss Terry. Good morning. I just Good. wanted to say thank you so much because I appreciate one, hearing how many years you've been doing this. Two, how many ways I, I am so 100% Yes, patching, whatever, it doesn't matter. Even though I've only been doing it for 10 months and I'm 83, so it's going to take a whole lot more years, I think, to get the full benefit. But hearing him and his enthusiasm and how it's helped in sports, I just want to say thank you guys so very, very much. It's been great. Thank you so much. That's so kind of you. I really am appreciative of your uh, wanting to hear me and listen to me. And I will tell you that anything having to do with stem cells and the regeneration of stem cells is going to be a positive thing on us. And that's the thing that I, I live on. So it's fantastic that you're doing it, even though you've only done it 10 months, just just keep keep plugging and 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 watch what happens. Exactly. I'm plugging. <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you, Terry. Really appreciate you popping in. Um, Ivory, are you gonna be at the convention? Uh I uh I raised two young uh daughters. So I will not be at the convention. I uh, actually, you know, yes, I actually have a, a priority and uh, one is cheerleading, <laughs> another is, oh, forget about it. It's it's fantastic. Um, I'm uber, I'm uber father, I'm this and I'm that, and that's what we do. And uh, so, yeah, unfortunately I won't, but it would be really great if one day I was able to come and I will be very soon. I will be able to come you one day. will be able to, you will. And um, how old are your daughters? Uh, they are 17 and 11. Wow, Back. brother, you started late, man. I'm got, not, I got two kids, seven grandkids, two great grandkids, and I'm six years younger than you. Oh, God bless you. Fantastic. <laughs> Did I, yeah, I can still jump over buildings. I told you. Let's go. Let's go. That's right. <laughs>
you know what? And being a cheer dad, I was the uh, captain of the cheer squad. And that's, I think, part of also where my love of football came because uh, just watching you guys. And um, I'm just grateful that we've been able to have this conversation. And like I said, I do. If you get to have a patching party, I have got to come down and meet your NFL peeps and just hang out. Maybe I'll go buy. No, I wouldn't do that. I I was going to say, maybe I'll go buy an old Raiders. I'd rather go buy an LA Rams jersey and hang in style with you. But I do. I do want to thank you. If you if you wore Ram gear, I could take I could take you around in SoFi. But you know, Raiders ain't going to get you there. I'm sorry, sorry. (laughs) They're not, and I've shaken that dirt off my heels. So, (laughs) what is it? Is it Herbert this year? Who's the quarterback for the Rams? Rams is it's it's uh, 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 the same guy that they had last year. uh, Matt. uh, Matt, uh, what, what, what's his name? Oh, my. Matthew Stafford. Stafford, yes. And I should know Matt Stafford for for real because he played for the Lions. The Lions, and, right? And also, also the Lions, uh, and also the Rams. So yes, Matt Stafford. Well, he looked really good last week, so I'm very happy about it. He did. I actually thought about picking him up and putting him on my bench. <laughs> you probably think about that, yes. Well, Ivory, again, thank you so much for all of your wisdom for sharing with us, for your service to humanity. You are a great man. And I'm grateful that you were here to hang out with me today and and just to bless us. So if everybody could just unmute and say thank you to Ivory. I'm lucky. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Ivory. Appreciate it. Thank you, Ivory.